Completing a through hike could be one of the most rewarding experiences you ever get to do in your entire life. Being with nature for such a long time, experiencing different views every single day, getting away from technology and the busy world that we live in, it is unbelievably rewarding. However, you push yourself more than you can ever imagine. And it is hard, it might even break you. But I found that by preparing in advance, it made the experience much more enjoyable. So in this video, I'm gonna go through a little bit about physical training, mental training, as well as nutrition as well. Because I just find that by doing all that preparation in advance, you go out there and you can enjoy the experience so much more. Some people don't do any training before a through hike or a long distance walk and that is absolutely fine, whatever works for you. But I prefer to train in advance because I found that once I was on trail, I had a lot less problems, a lot less ailments and I felt like I enjoyed the experience so much more because I saw a lot of people suffering out there. Some people use the trail itself as their training ground, which works for some people but not everybody and I saw a lot of people struggling with blisters and leg cramps some people were even turning around on the second or third day so I would highly recommend anybody going out there to train in advance if they can also this is not a walk in the park this requires stamina endurance and also balance if you were to ask me how long you should spend training, I would highly recommend about six months. I think that's a really good length of time to not only physically get fit, but also allow for any injuries or ailments that may arise during that time to heal. So you can build up that resistance and kind of recover from anything that happens during that time. I personally spent about nine months training, which probably seems like a long time, but it went so fast, but I did build up very, very slowly. Now I did my very first solo backpacking trip only seven months before the trail which I thought was quite a long time away from the trail but I had a lot of my gear I wanted to practice so I think about six to seven months is a perfect length of time. I've heard a lot of people train for a through hike by doing lots of squats, deadlifts, lunges, push-ups, pull-ups, all those types of things. But my advice is get out there and hike, hike, and hike some more. That is the best form of training for you. Trust me, it works. Now, if you don't have access to trails or hills, then great, go to a gym, do squats, do lunges, do things like that as well. But get out and hike as much as possible, even if it is on pavements, even if you go to car parks and start walking up and down the stairs with your pack on, do that, but make sure that you get out and you use your feet because you cannot build up your hiker feet in a gym. Also, one thing that I did is I used to go shopping with my backpack. So I used to walk to the shops, which was a few miles away with an empty backpack, do my weekly shop and then walk all the way back home, but always the harder way, which was over the hills. And I felt that really helps. Make sure you change the terrain of your hiking. Walk on grass, walk on rocks, sand, snow, mud, up and down hills. Do as much as you can in different environments. Add in some cross training a couple of times a week and things like yoga, pilates, swimming, weight training, things like that are all so beneficial to hiking because they work different types of muscles and also build up your balance. I liked yoga for so many different reasons because it allowed me to build up strength in a gentle manner, focus on certain muscle groups and also stretch really well at the end of each practice. Don't forget upper body strength because everyone thinks hiking is just the legs and it's not when you're through hiking or long distance hiking. You're carrying all your gear on your back and that will take its strain over time. So get those muscles strong before you hit the trail. I found that the best way to do this again is to hike with your backpack on. So I started off when I started training with a day pack with such little weight in it, just your normal kind of waterproof bottle of water and some food. And then over time, I just built up slowly. I started adding things to my pack. I started making it heavier, started adding tins of beans and weights, anything that you can get hold of, start putting that in your backpack. And then just build up over time and make sure that you don't just do it on the flat, that you do that on hills as well, because it makes such a difference. Stress injuries and ankle strains are two of the most common problems associated with hiking, long distance walking through hiking. 
I would recommend that before you start walking, always warm up your muscles first. Everyone thinks walking is just walking, but when you're carrying a heavy backpack, then you're putting a lot of strain on your body. And what you don't want to be doing is setting off very quickly and hurting those muscles, especially if you're going uphill or downhill to start with. So just walk slowly, add in some ankle rotations and just take it easy for those first 10, 20 minutes. Then add in some dynamic stretching if you prefer. Also, I would recommend stretch, 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 stretch. Do it as often as possible. When you're hiking, it's not just about doing it at the end of the day. When you stop to have a break or a lunch break, stretch then as well. Just gentle stretching will just ease those muscles and stop them tightening up too much. And then every evening, once you've finished your hike, do a really good body stretch. So you wanna be focusing on your Achilles, your feet, your calves, your quads, and your hamstrings. They're the most important areas to stretch, but also don't forget your lower back and your upper back as well. Start building up strength in your ankles before you head out on trail. And this can be so straightforward, such as standing on one foot, because you don't realize that just balancing like that is engaging so many muscles and strengthening your ankle. And you can start adding in dynamic stretches or movements whilst doing that, or even stand on a balance board. But it's very important to get those ankles strong before you head out, because most people nowadays tend to wear trail runners instead of your traditional hiking boot. So you're not getting that extra support around your ankle that you would have done with previous years and a lot of people forget that you're still again carrying so much extra weight on your body and your feet are taking all of that so get your ankles nice and strong you can also use resistant bands and different exercises there's plenty out there on the internet but i just found that balancing on one foot and then moving the other leg like forward to the side and back is making your ankle kind of wobble so you're building up strength that way and you can also do one-legged squats as well quite tough but it helps also build up your core because that is going to be taking a lot of weight so just do some planks or some push-ups or again like I've said before just wear your backpack a lot but make sure that your posture is good it is so important to train with your gear and in your gear don't save it for the first day out on trail because you need to get used to it before you head out on trail so the first thing you should be doing is training in the type of shoes that you're going to be wearing on trail i bought a pair of trainers that i knew i was going to be wearing and i trained in them completely and then about three weeks before i started out on the trail i wore my new pair which i knew i was going to be taking out with me just to give them a little bit of a wearing as well so make sure you wear your shoes that you're going to be heading out in because you might find that they don't work for you and you'll have to change them later another thing as well is to use trekking poles because most people i saw through hiking had trekking poles because it's not just about holding yourself up going up hills you're carrying so much weight on your back that a lot of the time the tendency is to lean forward because you've got that weight there but having the trekking poles it kind of makes your posture a lot better and it improves your hike so much by having those poles they come in so handy especially for rattlesnakes on trails as well it helps you have that security that you've got something that you can do that with <laughs> Use this training time to dial down your gear and get so familiar with it that you could use it with your eyes closed. This is the time to practice and make mistakes. So go off for a week, backpacking, camping, use all your gear, get familiar with it. And it's a great time to dial it all in as well. Find out what you're not gonna think you're gonna need or not use, or if something's too heavy or difficult, this is the time to change it. Mental preparation for a through hike is just as important as the physical side of it because you are going to be spending so much time away from home but not only that you're also going to be alone a lot of the time and that is something that a lot of people aren't always prepared for. So I found that when you're out hiking do long distances get away try and experience what it's like to hike for 20-30 miles on your own in silence because you might find you don't like it so much. So that's another indicator of if you want to be traveling with other people, hiking alone, it just helps you prepare in all areas. If you find that hiking alone can be quite lonely or you find that you dwell on things when you're hiking, 
look into the options of things like audiobooks or podcasts or music. So think about things like that that you can take with you on the trail to enjoy the experience even more. Also, you have to hike and train in all weathers when you're out there. So before you go, go out in all weathers. Do not just wait for nice days to do your training. You have to go out there in the rain, the hail, the snow, the blistering heat the wind you have to embrace it all there's a good saying out there you've got to embrace the suck and that is exactly what you have to do because if you're not going to like doing that on your training you're certainly not going to enjoy a through hike because it can be brutal out there you can go from the blistering heat to the freezing cold you have to imagine hiking for a few days in terrible downpours of rain or snow getting soaked through getting to camp knowing that you could end up completely soaked and wet all night and then getting up putting on your wet clothes the next morning that's something you've got to be prepared for when going out on trail you have to be all right with being uncomfortable but the whole point of doing something like this is to enjoy the hike. You have to enjoy it. So don't get obsessed about the miles. Don't get obsessed about comparing yourself to anybody else. You have to hike your own hike. That is another great saying about through hiking. It's all about how you want to do it. Obviously, you know the time limits. You know how many miles you've got to cover over that time. But go easy on yourself and do it in your time. Don't do it in somebody else's. Another thing you might experience is negativity from other people before you even start your hike. So again, that's already something that's mentally messing with you. You have to be prepared that there might be people out there saying, are you crazy? Why are you doing this? What about this? What about that? Or they might even say to you like they did to me, you will never be able to do this. And that is something that you have to grow strong. You have to think to yourself, your reasons why you want to do the hike, the reasons that matter to you about what you're going out there to do and why you're going to do it. So you've got to overcome all that before you even set out on trail sometimes. But again, that is just part of the preparation. It's something about building yourself up, getting yourself in that positive mind frame and then going out there and just smashing it. Now is the time to really focus on your nutrition. It sounds crazy, but you have to eat like an endurance athlete because you are going to be putting so much strain on your body. Over the few months of training before you head out, you may lose weight, so you have to focus on that now and it will stand you in good stead for when you're out on trail. One thing I would recommend is adding in more carbohydrates into your diet because a low carbohydrate, high protein diet is not suitable for long distance through hiking. You need to get access to those available carbohydrates to be able to fuel your body on these long distances that you're going to be hiking. Eat healthy, eat well as often as possible and get all these extra micronutrients by getting as much fruit and vegetables as possible. Eat complex carbs and lean proteins and just really focus on eating as well as possible. One thing I also did before I headed out on trail, which might be suitable for some people, it might not be for everybody, is I also supplemented my diet with extra iron so I could build up my reserves before I went out on trail. Now me, I am a vegan, so that was important to me, but depending on what your diet is like, you may not need to do that. Another thing I did was added in B12, and I think that was pretty much all the supplements I focused on before I went out on trail. One other thing that I did was start eating trail food before I went out there. And I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but I made sure that I started experimenting with trail mix and fruit leathers, cliff bars, I think it was, that I had in this country, and naked bars, those types of bars. I wanted to see how they worked for me when out training. And sometimes things worked and sometimes things don't. So it's good to try it before you go out there. So you know what you're wanting to be putting in your resupply boxes or what you want to reach for when you're getting into town. Hydration is extremely important when doing a lot of hiking. So make sure that you get plenty of water. Another thing to experiment with is electrolytes. And this is something that I didn't do before I headed out. So I would recommend anybody doing this. I like to try and eat things as natural as possible, but out on trail you can't start making your own ready-made electrolyte mixes, so you end up having to buy them. And this is very important because as you lose body fluids, so such as your sweat when you're out hiking, you're losing all those extra minerals and things that you need to keep you balanced. 
If you don't have the right balance of electrolytes in your body, this can lead to things like headaches, muscle cramps, dizziness, nausea. It can lead to seizures, so it can get quite serious. So it's important to look at the electrolytes. Experiment with a few different brands and also don't forget to have them before you hike, during it, as well as after. But also be careful not to have too many because I believe that if you have too many electrolytes then that also can cause problems. So just do a little bit of research about that before you go out. The one I preferred when I was out in America was a brand called Noon, spelled N-U-U-N. I will put the link in the description below of the brand that I like and the flavours and things. So you can have a little look at that so you can see what I'm talking about. But experiment with those because it does help you and it gives you a lot more energy when out hiking as well because I didn't use them for a couple of months, really. I kind of tried them here and there, but as soon as I started implementing them a little bit more, especially when it was really hot and I was sweating a lot, it made a huge difference. Another thing that you might want to take into account is magnesium. Now, a lot of hikers were taking this out on trail to help with muscle cramps because it is said to relax tight muscles. I tried it and it worked very well for me, but it can lead to some upset stomachs. So just have a little try with it before you go out on trail because you don't want that happening when you're out there. Now we have gone through quite a lot today, haven't we? We've gone through all the physical training, mental training, injury prevention, nutrition, gear, hydration. I think I've pretty much covered everything. But please bear in mind, these are my experiences. This is my advice. What works for me might not work for everybody, but I just wanted to share this video today because when I was searching for information about through hiking i kind of wanted a plan you know like when you're doing marathon training or running for an event or cycling or something and you have set mileage or set hours that you have to do every day on certain days and then you have to do other things on certain days but for through hiking there's nothing like that it's pretty much just hike and kind of do what you need to do as you go along i personally found that doing some short hikes during the week i used to do two or three short hikes in a week and then I used to have one very long hike at a weekend and I even got up to 30 miles before I went out there. I'll put the link somewhere for you to have a little watch of that video. But just enjoy it, enjoy the process. There's no right or wrong. But my advice if you want to take it is just get out there and hike as much as possible with your backpack on, build up your weight as you go. Do a little bit of extra exercises, a couple of days a week like yoga, Pilates. Make sure you stretch as often as possible. Eat well hydrate and just enjoy it so until next time goodbye